Riley Agua Dulce is conveniently located on the east side of the Santa Clarita Valley, just off the 14 freeway. Check out our homeschool options too. To schedule a campus tour or learn more about our programs, visit iLeadAguadulce.org. We're enrolling now. I Lead Schools. Free to think, inspired to lead. Hey there, it's Tori with your hometown station weather. Sunny today with highs in the mid-80s, overnight lows in the mid-50s. For anything and everything Santa Clarita Valley related, including the latest on COVID-19 here in the Santa Clarita area, go to hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station. 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I am Matt Watson, your host. It's good to have you in. This special edition of Eye on the Valley, as always, Homeschooling Answers is brought to you by KHTS in collaboration with SCVI and iLead Charter Schools. We welcome you in each day, Monday through Friday, live at 9 a.m. And we're here to provide support and updates for you as we continue cruising through distance learning. And uh, it, it looks like this distance learning might, uh, might carry on a little bit longer. We're heading into the summer months, but uh, still up in the air. We will see what happens in the fall, but uh, decisions are starting to be made. You know, we also continually uh, uh, build in new resources on our website, homeschoolinganswers.com. I won't go into that much because we're going to go into that quite a bit deeper a little bit later in the show. We've got a lot of new and 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 really interesting things for you on homeschoolinganswers.com. It's more than just curriculum that's sorted by grade level or subject area. It's more than just uh, parenting resources. We've got all kinds of stuff there. So while you're listening to the show, feel free to pop on over to homeschoolinganswers.com. Check it out. But like I said, a little later in the show, we are going to go a little bit deeper into homeschoolinganswers.com because there's some cool stuff up there that, uh, that we're adding to every day. Before we get started, I just want to pop into this date in history. Some really interesting things going on this date in history. 1927, American pilot Charles A. Lindbergh completes that first solo nonstop transatlantic flight and the first ever nonstop flight from New York to Paris. And then five years to the day later, 1932, after Lindbergh accomplished his feat, Amelia Earhart became the first woman to solo across the Atlantic and the first pilot to do it since, since Lindbergh. So uh, quite interesting, five days apart, uh, Lindbergh and Amelia Earhart accomplished that transatlantic flight. And on May 21st, 2017, just a couple years ago, a little bit more recent, the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus performed its last show in East Garden City, New York, after over 130 years of operation. Originally opening in Wisconsin in the late 1800s when brothers Charles, Albert, Otto, Alfred, and John Ringling created their entertainment group, the circus would later join forces with the world-famous Barnum and Bailey Circus. The circus operator cited consistently poor ticket sales as the reason for the shutdown just three years ago today, stating that revenue simply could not sustain the production. Ironically, just seven months later, the movie, The Greatest Showman, the musical biopic about the life of P.T. Barnum would open up, also in New York, by the way, and go on to gross nearly half a billion dollars, billion with a B worldwide. Interesting. So take that with you. I know something else happened this date in history about 40 years ago, and I, I, I can't remember exactly what it was because... Uh, as whatever movie that was that premiered, I, I can't remember. I, I should remember I was there, but I fell asleep halfway through it, and Star Wars nerds everywhere gasped. And in higher news, higher education news, as I mentioned uh, as we started the show, College of the Canyons announced yesterday, our local community college, they announced yesterday that they're going to continue with distance learning for most of their, their courses. Most of their in-person classes will be off campus and, and through the distance learning platform that they've pretty near perfected this semester. Um, they will continue in that distance format with the exception, of course, of a few CTE labs. You know, it's kind of tough to do uh, welding online and, 
and culinary arts online, but a uh, few of those classes will meet in person, but most of the COC classes in the fall will be online. Cambridge University said, oh yeah, College of the Canyons? We'll, we'll see you that, and we're going to raise you a semester. Ca that's right, Cambridge in the UK is scrapping all in-person lecture courses for the entirety of next school year. So a spot of bad news for some, but you know what? We'll roll with it, right? Because we're flexible. We're ad we adapt. We are Americans. We are Santa Claritians. We've got this. That's what we do. And you know what else we got? We've got a great show today. We've got Cheryl Senna. English facilitator and senior advisor at SCBI coming back into the show to talk about what her seniors are doing now. And, and this time, she's actually brought one of them with her. That's right. Graduating senior Sam Salters will be joining Miss Senna here in just a minute or so. We're also going to check back in with Shannon Vonnegut. Do you remember Shannon? She is the librarian of the city of Santa Clarita. As Mayor Smythe informed us on Tuesday, the city libraries are open. But don't jump in your cars just yet. Shannon's going to tell us what you'll need to do before you're able to utilize the library services. And of course, we will wrap up the show with our show's official licensed marriage and family therapist, Christina Debray, who will, will be here to help us work through some of our trauma. You know, a lot more of us are, are dealing with trauma than ever before, and, and she's here to, to help us work through it. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first two guests are Cheryl Senna and Sam Salters. Cheryl Senna hails from Boston, Massachusetts, She's a founding facilitator at SCBI and has played an instrumental role in building and maintaining the powerful culture at SCBI. And if you've ever visited our campus, even for an hour or two, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that culture, in turn, has set the tone for each of our eight other campuses around the country. Cheryl facilitates 12th grade English internships, and the she's the senior class advisor. Cheryl's a voracious reader and writer who's constantly working on one of her two novels. She earned her, her bachelor's and her master's from Hofstra University, where, did you know this, Sam? Did you know this about Miss Senna? Cheryl captained the women's rugby team at Hofstra. Pretty bad, huh? And Sam Salters is also here. He's a graduating senior at SCBI who says that his personal mission this year was just to pass all his classes and, and prepare for college and future, but he's so much more than that, isn't he, Cheryl? Yeah, he definitely is. He's a photographer, he's an artist, he's an athlete who enjoys mountain biking and skating. He's an intelligent and thoughtful young man who is quietly carrying the standard for his generation. Cheryl, Sam, welcome to the show. Welcome in. Good morning, Matt. It is good to hear from you. Are you there, Sam? Yeah, good morning. All righty, there we go. I had a little issue with my headphones. It's good to hear from you guys. So, Sam, let's go ahead and start with you. Tell us a little bit about your experience at SCBI. When did you start with us? Why did you, you and your family choose SCBI? Um, tell us a little bit about your journey with our school. Well, I started in eighth grade coming from Italy, where, funnily enough, I also played rugby. Ah, <laughs> um, there we go. Yeah, I came in eighth grade, and we really chose SCBI because at the time we didn't really know where we were going to be living. So we were looking for a good school, but also one that didn't necessarily have a catchment or have a lot of flexibility. Okay. So. Um, and then also coming from an IB school, I knew that the curriculum and kind of standards of that were very good and high. And we wanted to kind of choose a school with the IB and with similar views on learning. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of families that uh, that choose SCBI specifically for that IB program. Y you know, you mentioned you moved here from Italy, Sam. I noticed that thick Italian accent that you've got. Uh, uh, you were not born in Italy, though, were you? No, I was born in England, um, and then I moved to Italy when I was four. Yeah, your, your family moves around a little bit. You are quite the international young man yourself, and I didn't realize that you were also a rugby player. You and Miss Senna are kindred kindred spirits. So tell me something, Sam, before we get to Miss Senna, what's been the most enjoyable or maybe the most memorable experience that you've had at SCVI in, in your, what has it been, five years now? Um, I don't know. There's been a lot. Um, I would honestly just say the uh, environment itself and just going to school every day and having teachers that I enjoy learning with and just kind of having a good time. That's interesting you say that. I referred to our culture uh, on uh, uh, during the intro, and 
you're absolutely right. Just being on campus is a, is a special experience out there at, at SCDI. Well, Cheryl, um, can you talk to us about how the staff and kids are doing right now, just in, in a general sense? I know you guys are going to be talking about the senior portfolio defense in just a minute, but uh, before we get to that, how are the kids doing at, at SCVI with distance learning? And, you know, you're the, the senior advisor. You're in charge of a lot of those landmark events, prom, graduation, things like that. It, it can be a tough time to be a, a high school senior. How's everybody doing over there? We're, we're, we're uh, surviving. I think that one of the one of our advantages was that we, we are a pretty tech-rich school, so meaning that we use a lot of technology, so the, um, the transition was easygoing. The other thing I think that works well with us is we believe in social-emotional uh, learning, so we had developed relationships with our learners so we could have those deep conversations about disappointment and loss. And we incorporated them very early on in discussions about um, the reality of the situation and also what were some, we brainstormed about what were some ways we could still mark graduation and mark everything, honor our seniors, but also our, our commitment to safety and health for our learners. So. Yeah, and another one of the beautiful things, while you've got a, a large campus, uh, about 1,000 kids there on campus, that's kindergarten through 12th grade. So you've, you've only got a few dozen graduating seniors this year, it's easy to pull the entire senior class together and talk about, okay, this is what the health department is telling us that we can and cannot do, and, and, and so uh, what do you guys think? Rather than pulling a random sample of kids or, or uh, maybe an exemplary example of kids, you guys are able to, to work with the entire group of, of seniors, aren't you? Yes. We pulled them in on two meetings, and then we had meetings with parents following that. We had Zoom meetings in the evening, and we shared what the learners wanted and we shared the reality of the situation, and we came up with a week and about a, a few, a week and a half of activities for the seniors to mark their um, to mark their year, end of year, with the hopes that when this is lifted, we will do uh, a celebration or a ceremony uh, together. Yeah, y you know it's tough. It's uh, you know, and I heard someone sharing just a couple of days ago. It's not fair, and it's it's just not fair. You know, I remember years ago growing up here in Santa Clarita, and, and my father would, would continually remind me, Matthew, life is not fair. I didn't realize he meant my life, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it is tough. It, it's difficult to go through these things. Cheryl, you know my son is a senior this year, and, and, and we're walking through it as well. Um, and it's just one of those things that, uh, that, that we kind of have to roll with. We don't really have a whole lot of choices. But I love seeing how you guys are, are taking those lemons and, and making some lemonade. I, I just kind of glossed over prom. Now, you guys, and I'm saying this with, with kind of air quotes, um, you guys at SCBI did not have prom this year, but y you did something else, right? We had a virtual dance to raise money for hunger, and we, um, the seniors and juniors on our advisory council, which is like your student council and other schools, they decided to invite the freshmen and sophomores to come. And we uh, had a DJ. We hired a DJ, and he did virtual dance for an hour, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And then an hour later, we cheered our um, Get Lit team on to the finals. So that was a great night. That was a really good uh, night for our school. And then we've done other things. Like last Friday, one of the f my favorite things since being an educator is we the staff met at the school, practicing social distancing, of course, and we. We uh, split up the list of seniors and delivered uh, lawn signs to every senior um, that's graduating with a care package that had the, the newsletter with all the things we're going to do um, some, and some supplies for thing, the events we're going to do later on. For example, we are having a virtual retreat next Tuesday, the day after Labor Day, mm -hmm. which is the date of our um, regular retreat. We've brought in uh, trainers who are going to train our um, have a team building session with the the focus of our retreat is honoring what has happened to us now and looking forward and marking that moment rather than just like rushing off to the graduation parties mm -hmm. we really um, want to take a moment and pause and honor that and and have them transition and and really think about the uh, enormity of graduating yeah and I, I love that SCVI does that every year that uh, right before graduation, you all take the seniors on a retreat, and, and you do hit the pause button and say, all right, before we jump into it, before you know we light the fireworks off, 
let's, let's take a, a, a moment to reflect, to connect with each other. And it's funny, there are times that, that uh, kids come back from that retreat and they say, you know, I went to school with, with these people for four years, in some cases, six years, eight years, 10 years together because we're a comprehensive school. And uh, we were great friends and, and lifelong friends, but we became even closer at this retreat. I love that you guys are able to still do that. Yes, yes. I, and that was uh, an important thing. Uh, it's, what, it's one of my favorites favorite activities and then we're going to do other things like we're going to decorate our caps together have a announce the college and career choices on on june 1st and some of the college change colleges changes change their acceptance dates um we'll have a senior family sunrise where uh we will have all the families uh blow bubbles at the same time and we're going to capture that on zoom and our clap out which is my favorite favorite activity and i I don't want to give away too much but we're going to do our clap out and that's when during the year, we have all the way from kindergarten to 11th grade clapping for every graduate, and the graduates walk through with their caps and gowns, and it's just a wonderful, um, that's the last day of class for every senior. And then we're going to do a salute for the seniors at 6.30 p.m. on June 5th, the day of our graduation, and we're going to salute them and honor them in the way in which they deserve. I'm not crying. You're crying, Senna. That is beautiful. I love how uh, how you guys are so thoughtful in, in honoring them. Okay, so we've got just a couple minutes before we need to break, uh, and we're going to get deep into this senior portfolio defense when we come back from commercial. But Cheryl, before we go, would you describe to our listeners what it is that we're talking about this morning, the, the senior defense? Okay, so it's a culminating or milestone project. It's the last thing every senior does before they graduate, and we began implementing it three years ago. Um, I think it was our missing link. Uh, what, one of the core, be- core beliefs of SCVI is that our learners are the navigators of their own learning. So we have a, a, lo- a lot of um, things that they do. For example, they participate in writing their own goals with their families and their uh, facilitators. They uh, do. We do learner-led conferences instead of parent-teacher conferences. And then at the end of the year, every learner from and this is kindergarten through high, uh, senior year, they um, do a learner showcase. What that means is, again, it's another time to pause and reflect. What did I learn what, this year? What were my big takeaways? What's my favorite project? What was my biggest challenge? Uh, and then what uh, what I'm going to take from that moving forward to my next grade. And I watch my own children do this in second and third grade. And we did that throughout senior year. And three years ago, uh, we attended a senior defense. A couple of uh, staff members attended in L.A. They did them or at a conference. And it's so awesome. What it is is the seniors have their leadership notebooks, and everyone has a leadership notebook, which reflects on every class. And they pick a project that um, shows that they are ready to move on to their next steps in their lives. We actually have a really cool uh, driving question that they all have to answer. It's how am I prepared to move on to the next level of life? And that project has to showcase the skills they have. And if that next level of life is college, then what skills from this project did they learn that will make them successful in college? They present that to a panel of five to six people from the community, community meaning at our school, in our iLead um, community, and also in the general community. This year we were very blessed to have a few people from the Santa Clarita community to be evaluators. And um, they present a little bit about who they are, and then they dive in and they uh, dissect that project and explain it to us in a way that shows that they um, can articulate and move forward with their um, dreams. So very much an interview on their way out the doors of high school for them to sit before this panel and prove that they're ready to to go off and head into the next stage of their life. That sounds like it can be a little bit intimidating. We're going to ask Sam what the the experience was like for him as soon as we come back from the commercial break. We're talking to Cheryl Senna, senior advisor, and Sam Salters, graduating senior at SCVI. Like I said, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but we will be right back for more about the senior defense portfolio Stand by. We will be back. 
You're listening to SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I'm your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHTS. CBC Cleaning and Restoration is ready and waiting to clean and disinfect your home or business during these trying times. CBC is certified, OSHA trained, and insured for COVID-19. They are now offering 10% off services plus free disinfection application through June 30th. All staff wears full-on PPE, and all equipment is disinfected before and after every job. Have CBC clean your carpets, upholstery, and hard surface flooring. Voted best commercial and residential cleaning company in the Santa Clarita Valley year after year. To take advantage of the COVID-19 special or more information, call CBC at 294-2221. That's 294-2221. When your child learns who they are, they can take on anything that life throws their way. That's the focus of Isla Agua Dulce, a tuition-free charter school just off the 14 freeway in the East Santa Clarita Valley. We believe in learning through cooperation, creativity, and emotional growth. Our rapidly expanding TK through 8 campus places self-discovery at the core of every experience, from an outdoor science lab to our greenhouse and technology-rich exploratorium. For enrollment information, including grade 7 enrollment starting this fall and homeschool options, visit iLeadAguadulce.org. Your hometown station. It can happen at any time. Breaking news in the Santa Clarita Valley. KHCS has you covered. Brush fires, emergency freeway closures, police activity. If it's happening in the SUV, we'll let you know about it with our breaking news coverage. Keep a channel preset to your hometown station, KHTS. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, real estate developers, realtors, contractors, businesses, nonprofit organizations, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker is one of Santa Clarita's leaders, consistently listed as one of our most influential. When everything is on the line and you need legal counseling, visit hackerlawgroup.com. Dreaming of becoming the next Steph Curry or Clay Thompson, or maybe just you want your kid to look good and have fun on the court? Introducing the Shotmaster. The Shotmaster is a revolutionary basketball training aid that isolates the shooting pocket, allows you to develop that consistent shot. Shotmaster will improve your shooting efficiency, accuracy, and shooting percentages dramatically. It's the ultimate training device. There's nothing like it. Visit Shotmaster.net and discover for yourself how Shotmaster will become your game changer. Shotmaster.net. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. We are also live on Facebook Live. Head on over to the KHTS Facebook page. That's KHTS Radio and there we are with the salmon-colored background. You can peer in on us at the at the studio, and I say us because although there's only one of us on camera, there are two of us here, and that's why I'm wearing the mask. Invariably, people always ask, what's that fool doing with a mask on in a room by himself? But you see that thumb right there? That's my engineer, Shane. He's across the board from me, about seven, eight feet away, so we're staying safe, but still wearing these masks. We're talking this morning with SCVI Senior Advisor, Cheryl Senna, and graduating senior Sam Salters, we're talking about a presentation that every graduating senior at SCVI goes through at the end of their senior year. Kind of a, well, exactly what it's called, a defense, a, a, a way of that f for them to kind of prove that they're ready for this next step in life. So let's get to Sam and let's talk about this because, Cheryl, you were saying before the, the break that it's a, a presentation that they have to do before a panel of staff, leadership and community members sam what was that like was that uh, was that intimidating to go through or or is this something that you're used to um i've made a lot of presentations of my time at scvi so i'm definitely used to them it was a little intimidating just because of like kind of the whole senior defense thing just it's like feels more important but suddenly i was uh very prepared by my experience here at scvi to do this yeah, you know, it's funny, Sam, we sat down and calculated a couple of years ago, and uh, and we figured that on average, if you attend SCVI from kindergarten through 12th grade, you're going to make anywhere between about 85 and 100 public presentations. And so, yeah, our kids definitely get used to public speaking. So, Sam, tell us a little bit about your presentation. Um, what did uh, what were some of the things that you presented, shared, reflected on? 
Um, so I chose, we had to choose a piece of work that really reflects kind of what skills we built and shows we're ready to move on. So I decided to choose my internal assessment for history, and that means um, it is a historical investigation you have to write uh, pretty much completely independently over the course of two years. Um, and then you take that and you um, submit it to IB and then they grade it, and that's a part of your final grade. And yeah. with the situation now, it's actually a big part. Right, because um, normally you guys do an oral presentation at the end of this two-year curriculum. There, there's several different levels, but because of the, the pandemic, they reduced it down mostly to the, the written presentation, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and there's a test and all that stuff can't happen now. Right. But, um, yeah, and so I chose that mainly because, I don't know, I felt like I put a lot of work into it, and I felt that it really uh, showed my skills and my growth. And we also had to connect it to the uh, I Lead Learner Outcomes, which are, like, um, core ideas that, as a learner going through an I Lead school, you kind of uh, attain and sort of learn to use and uh they're very useful going forward and you kind of have to demonstrate like which ones of those that you um, kind of believe you really use throughout this project. Mm -hmm. um, so I just had to, I had to reflect on my work and my year and how I believed I was ready to move on through it. And I think it was a really good experience and I think it really helped me kind of digest my senior year better. Oh, that's that's terrific. So you, you reflected on this two-year research project in history. What was the topic of that project? Um, I explored uh, the question, to what extent did the development and threatened use of nuclear weapons affect foreign relations, uh, U.S. foreign relations during the Cold War? So I really got to get a snapshot in the kind of the mindset of the presidency at the time, because there's kind of a lot of polarized views around that time, and I really wanted to Get a better perspective and a better understanding of the situation and it's always a time that's interested me in history um so it was really interesting to really, really dive deeper um and i actually discovered that a lot of the kind of views we have and the things you generally think were views at the time are in fact not fully correct um as i discussed in my uh, defense there's always more than one side to a story and there's often more than two <laughs> yeah, and uh, I really got a perspective on that doing this project. That's incredible. I mean, you're talking about something that is a a, a master's or even a doctoral thesis level kind of work that you're developing as a junior and senior in high school. That's that is amazing. So you present your work, you reflect on your work, you reflect on your time at uh, in the high school there at SCDI, and then uh, it gets open to the panel to ask questions. Right? What were some of the questions that the panelists were asking you? Um, a good question that I, I liked was, um, I'm a very also math and physics focused person, um, as well as on history. And so, um, a lot of people in the panel thought it was interesting that I chose uh, history work and, um, they asked kind of how this connected to uh, like physics or math. And it's just kind of, I thought that was a good question. I was, just kind of questioning the norm and reflecting on kind of past things that have happened and like challenging that. Mm -hmm. and I think that's really a big aspect in any field and something you should definitely bring to the table. Because, uh, for example, like in physics, there are a lot of things that were incorrect until somebody decided to challenge them and kind of found that the earth wasn't flat, <laughs> for example. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. So... Uh, so part of this presentation, you uh, you step out and then you, you come back in and you are very keenly aware that you're being evaluated by the, uh, these panelists, right? And you're evaluated on the parameters of mastery of knowledge, you know, what you've learned throughout high school, application of that knowledge, how well you use what you've learned in, in developing your, your projects and, and your reflections, and then you're, you're – you're scored, you're assessed on your metacognition, on your reflection, right? How, how deeply and, and how thoroughly you reflect. And then you're, you're also scored on your presenta presentation skills. So it's pretty thorough, pretty stressful for a 17, 18-year-old learner to, to be going through. So how do you think you did, Sam? Do you know? 
Uh, yeah, I do know. I think I did uh, pretty well in all of those categories. And it was a bit stressful, but again, having made kind of so many presentations and reflections over my time, I thought I was uh, very prepared to do it. Well, that's good to hear. I'm actually, uh, and I hope I'm not letting the cat out of any bag, Cheryl. Um, Miss Senna shared with me the rubric that uh, that they used to score you, and, and you're right. You did quite well. And In fact, let's talk to Miss Senna. Cheryl, um, what did the panel think about Sam's presentation? Uh, he's definitely one of the ones we were blown away by, particularly how well he took us through each step of his uh, project and uh, was able to describe not only what was re required of him, but also some of the insights that he got garnered along the way. The, when he talked a little bit about how he, the two sides or more than two sides of the story, you know, how many 18-year-olds actually believe that, that's a huge thing. Uh, we were blown away by that. But also just how, um, if you haven't noticed, Sam's very cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> We, we think he's an old sage, so just the fact that he, the presentation was of someone who is probably already in college rather than someone just graduating high school. You know, ma when you said master's thesis, that is one of the reasons why colleges love the IB because the work that they're doing isn't just taking a test as you do with AP, you know, take a test at the end. It is really about um, the kind of learning you do in college. So when a college recruiter sees that they're like holy cow this person's ready to move on and sam definitely is yeah yeah definitely so we talked about sam's presentation and, and obviously I'm, I'm getting a flavor for that just here talking to sam on the radio it, it it had to have been an amazing thing. You know, Cheryl, one of my biggest regrets of this year is that I wasn't able to participate. Uh, the, these senior defenses are, are one of my favorite events, and uh, they're always amazing. How are the other presentations going, though? They're going quite well. I, I think one thing that uh, <coughs> different about the kind of evaluation we're doing, uh, n no one fails. We make them redo it, um, and I think that that's an important thing to note. This is an interview process. It's something that you will do, do over and over when you when you uh, graduate for jobs, for schools, and having those skills and having some guidance with those skills is is quite a an awesome thing. So what we do is they, they present, they come in, they present for ten minutes, all about who they are and, and their artifact. We ask follow up questions for five minutes, and then we send them into a waiting room, which is much easier in Zoom. Uh, we send them into a um, waiting room. And then for five minutes, the evaluators, we calibrate. We, we sit there and we agree and we talk about what skills they have and we, we agree on every, every um, evaluation. And then we pull them back in and we give them feedback and at the end we let them know if they pass or have to redo. So uh, most of the learners are, are passing. They're able to articulate and move on. Some of them are missing a piece or maybe a couple of pieces and, and we let them know. We're like, look, this is what you did well. Uh, and this is what you have to focus on, and we would think you would benefit from redoing this portion and coming back, and we have a date, and we give them a time right then. Um, we also give them an opportunity to, to sit in on a workshop with me, and we think you would, would benefit from focusing in on this, this, and this, and coming back and presenting again. Yeah, and, and you guys don't pay lip service to it. I mentioned that it's kind of that uh, interview on their way out the door, but... It, it's not something that, that kids roll their eyes at because they know if they don't pass, they're not ready to go, and, and they don't, and, and they do come back. I love that idea that, uh, that we do that with a lot of things at SCVI. It's not that you pass or fail. It, it's not that, oh, you didn't do well, bummer, you get a bad grade, and now let's move on to the next topic. It's you haven't learned this yet, but, but uh, it's something you need. If we feel that it's something that's valuable, you need to keep working on it. And it's so powerful. Last year when we first did it, it was the first year we did it uh, in the way in which we're doing it now. I remember two people uh, got a redo on the first day, and they went back to class. It happened to be a 12th grade class in at that time, and they were like, we didn't pass. And everyone after that was, was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right. They kind of word spread, and they, they, they really upped their yeah. game. I remember that. And, and this, it's the same thing with us, with, with, uh, with the adults and the different programs that we develop. Um, we are constantly retooling and, and re-upping our game. So, so as you're looking forward to this time next year, Cheryl, is there anything that you guys are going to do differently, any, any way that you're going to uh, ratchet it up on the seniors next year? Um, we talked about maybe letting them add a second artifact 
we mm-hmm. did a, some other schools do two artifacts, and they add like another five minutes to the presentation time. And um, because a few few learners wanted to share that second artifact and go into deep deep about it, and what you do is you you give them categories. Uh, what's one that that showcases how you your social emotional learning, and what's one for academic or so uh, that's one of the things we're thinking of doing for next year. Very interesting. Um, before we before we close here, I do want to uh, look now forward. We've talked a lot about the present, a little bit about the past. Sam, let's talk about your future. What are you, what are your plans uh, for after high school? Are, are you planning on going to college, military? What's uh, what's in the future for you? Um, I'm planning to go to college. I'm uh, planning to go to University of California, Santa Barbara to study physics there. Okay. Fantastic. Um, and then beyond that, or is that is there a career that you're you're planning on with your with your physics? Um, maybe moving into some kind of engineering related field, maybe. But just kind of seeing where my passion goes, really. There you go. It's UC Santa Barbara. There's uh, very few places in the world that I can think of to, that, that would be a better place to, to study and continue to grow than that. That is fantastic. Um, Sam, I, I want to congratulate you just on uh, the, the young man that you've become. I, I don't know if you remember, but uh, when you guys first started literally looking into SCVI, it was that, uh, that summer before your eighth grade, and, and, and there weren't a whole lot of people on campus there, but I had the pleasure of meeting your family and and giving you a little bit of a tour of the school and and the the, the person that you've grown into is 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 phenomenal you and your family and your facilitators are, are to be congratulated so thanks for joining us cheryl thank you for joining us i appreciate it you're doing great things at scvi thank you thank you so much matt and thank you sam thank you and i do remember that matt <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was an interesting day i think we were both wearing our short pants it was a hot summer afternoon well, if you are interested in this type of education, you know, uh, whether your child uh, chooses the IB, the International Baccalaureate path, or, uh, or not, they're going to get that deep level of reflection, that close connection with the staff that Cheryl was talking about, as, as well as uh, a strong level of guidance in the area of social-emotional learning. You know, every school is talking about social-emotional learning, but SCVI has been doing it for over 12 years now. If you're interested in this type of educational experience for yourself, for your children, you can get more information this Friday morning at 10 a.m. Head on over to uh, the SCVI website. It's iLeadSantaClarita.org. Or if you are on Facebook Live right now, I'm sure producer Sarah is about to post the link to the informational uh, session. It's going to be a Zoom session this Friday morning at 10 a.m. You'll have the opportunity to ask questions of our staff, of our administration. Um, not sure if any of the other uh, of the learners are going to be there, but you're going to get an authentic experience. This is the time of year where we typically host tours of our school, which unfortunately, as you all know, we can't do that anymore, but we can give you a really good insight as to what you can expect at, at SCVI, and, and, and you've got the opportunity to, uh, again, put the, put the staff to the test there. So uh, go ahead and head on over to our website. You can either Google SCVI or go to iLeadSantaClarita.org and, and check it out. Join us this Friday morning at 10 a.m. for that, that live introduction and informational session at SCVI. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I'm going to be answering one of the questions from yesterday. One of our listeners sent in a question that, uh, that I think a lot of us could benefit from. So we'll hear that when we come back. You're listening to SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. Hi, Kirk Stinson here with Plumbing by Kirk, your hometown plumber. With another tip, close your sink drain and remove your expensive jewelry when entering the shower to avoid costly plumbing expenses. But if it does happen, shut off the water immediately and call Plumbing by Kirk. We invite you to visit our website for free plumbing advice at plumbingbykirk.com or give us a call, 263-6519. That's 263-6519. My dad is the best plumber ever. Call Plumbing by Kirk. You see so much when you look at your child. A creative spirit that surprises you every day curiosity that develops into exploring unique passions. A little leader growing every day to discover who they are, what they love, and how they can make their mark on the world. 
At SCVI, we see those same amazing things. Our tuition-free K-12 charter school gives your child boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely with a customized learning program built around each individual student. As iLEAD's founding school, SCVI combines an immersive approach to traditional subject learning with extracurricular activities, including STEAM, robotics, theater, music, and sports. SCVI has the only international baccalaureate program in Santa Clarita, with a 10-year proven track record of graduates excelling at top universities. And we're in your backyard, just off the 5 Freeway in West Santa Clarita Valley in Castaic. For enrollment information or to learn more about our program, including homeschool options, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. These days, it's hard to figure out how to fill all the self-isolation time, let alone figure out what to have for lunch or dinner. Salt Creek Grill owner Greg Amsler is helping us out in a big, big way. Salt Creek is now offering takeout and curbside pickup, so you don't even have to get out of your car. Now, if you'd like, you could stay at home. They participate with Uber Eats, Postmates, DoorDash, and Grubhub. Their entire menu is available for pickup or delivery, including to-go beer and wine. Hey. In addition, Greg's offering wine at 25% off, along with daily specials. If you'd like to buy a gift card for a future visit, now's the time. Buy a $50 gift card and get $10 extra dollars on the card completely free. Buy a $100 gift card, you get an extra $25. Bucks. Salt Creek Grill, located next to Regal Cinema at the Valencia Mall. For more info, go to saltcreekgrill.com. I never thought I'd be looking for an assisted living home until mom got sick. Suddenly, there were questions that I didn't have answers to and only limited time to find the answers. What facility could take the best care of mom? Then my mother's social worker gave me a brochure for assisted living locators and informed me that assisted living locators is recommended by more health care professionals than any other agency. Call Shannon at assisted living locators, 544-1004. That's 544-1004. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. So... Yesterday, if you remember, we had Dustin Langning on. Dustin is an eighth grade facilitator out at SCVI, and he was talking all about project-based learning and, and the projects that, that his eighth graders were working on. He talked about the passion project that they had just completed and, and where he, they parlayed their kids' passions into some incredible deeper learning experiences. For example, uh, he talked about the learner who had a passion for the fermentation of different foods and, and just wanted to take a deep dive onto that and look at how different foods fermented and uh, uh, and just went really deep and, and put together a, an incredibly uh, reflective uh, presentation on the fermentation of food. And, and yeah, again, these are eighth graders. And so you can see how Sam, who we talked to last break, uh, is able to take these kind of experiences and, and just grow on them and, and get to the level that he was at by the time he, he finished high school a lot of our kids look, you know, very similar. Sam's quite an impressive young man, uh, but uh, by no you by no means an anomaly at at, at SCVI. He's, he and his classmates uh, they're always really really deep. Um, I'm, I'm going on a little bit of a bird walk here, but Cheryl last uh, last break talked about some of the kids that that didn't pass their senior defense and had to had to redo it. You know, even some of those kids that were told that they needed to. Uh, have a redo uh, their their presentations were powerful and and you know there were there were uh, tears of reflection there were there were tears of pain there were tears of joy uh, and some really motivating presentations that kids made even though they didn't pass muster I, it's really interesting and, and so you can see how the facilitators really do hold their kids to a high level of standard yesterday Dustin also talked about Something that was uh, seemed a little bit dark and morbid, and I shared it with my teenage son yesterday, and, and he went, whoa, cool. You know how 
teenagers can get sometimes. They go really deep into some dark areas. And Dustin talked about the learner who took their passion uh, for uh, learning about, well, serial killers and decided to make a last meal cookbook where she put together the recipes uh, of different serial killers and their last meals and then also wrote about the uh, that uh, that individual in their their last meal cookbook. I joked with Dustin that it might be the only cookbook ever with a black cover. Um, and uh, that learner's actually had some people reach out and, and ask if, if they can buy a copy of that cookbook. It sounds really interesting. Um, and so we had Dustin on, and we were talking about these different things. And, and, and the Facebook live feed kind of really started popping from uh, folks that – have had their kids go through eighth grade in, a, at SCBI and how amazing of an experience it is. One of our listeners lamented that, uh, that they've really struggled because they've looked forward to having their kids physically in Dustin's class and, and, and the rest of the team there in, in eighth grade. And they got shortchanged this year with the, the pandemic. All of us got shortchanged in so many different ways. It isn't, it isn't just the seniors. But uh, one of you sent me a question during the interview that I didn't have a chance to get to. I did see the question, and, and the problem was at that point we only had a few, a few minutes left, and, and Dustin didn't get to everything that he wanted to talk about before he had to head into his Zoom class. And the question that you sent in was a, it was a big one. Um, it, it was a deep question that I figured deserved more than just 30 or 40 seconds of our time. So I wanted to go into that. You know, Dustin and I are on the project-based learning team together. He's, he's certainly dynamic, um, uh, but I feel like I can, uh, I can at least keep up with him in, in the area of project-based learning. One of you asked me yesterday, you said, I love hearing Dustin's passion about project-based learning. How can we as parents at home school, uh, at home now schooling our kids, incorporate some of the same level of excitement and latitude necessary for project-based learning without getting frustrated because of our lack of the lack of pr passion that we get from our child's end. A and, uh, and that really struck a chord with me. So yeah, there are some things you can do. So uh, I don't know if you wanna replay this later or if you wanna jot these down, but very similar to what Dustin did, you start just by asking your kid. Start by asking them. Now, you know your child better than, than anyone. Uh, how do they need to frame that, that question in order to, to get the best response? For some of you, it's easy. Just ask them what they want to study, what they want to learn, and, and it's a mere choice of topics. But the way you ask the question leads me to believe that this may not be the case for you individually. Your child sounds a little bit like mine, where if you use the word learn or study, they're going to tune out right away. So you may need to phrase it like this. What are you passionate about? What have you always been curious about? Or what are some of the things that you wonder about? And again, if your child's like mine, y you may have to be willing to be a little bit more patient and stubborn than they are. Um, patient, but yeah, stubborn. My son or daughter would, would push back, both of them would, I think. They, they both have, have always been kids that would be willing to do anything that their teacher asks, but, but a lot less for mom and dad. So be willing to push them, but push them gently. Uh, be that steady drip of water, not the jackhammer, okay? Try this. Introduce the idea tonight at dinner, but let them just think about it. Don't expect them to, to, to have an answer. And even if they do, don't accept the answer tonight. Tell them that you're going to start brainstorming tomorrow night. Then bring a whiteboard the following night and, and ask the question again. And, and if they give you the I don't know or do we have to do this, again, be patient, okay? Throughout the day, maybe lean in and remind them. And even if they come up with nothing for the next night or so, just, just keep going and, and ask them. Uh, we are up against a hard break, and so I want to go over some of these other steps that we're going to get to uh, a little bit later on. But again, we've got to check in with national news stories and updates right now. So we'll, we'll do that. Stick around. When we come back, we're going to be talking the Santa Clarita Public Library. You're listening to SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS.
When you're looking for a midnight snack, sometimes fast food just doesn't cut it. California Bakery and Cafe is open 24-7, so you'll be able to find fresh donuts, danishes, bagels, all-natural fruit juices, gourmet sandwiches, and much more at any hour. With elaborate cakes for any occasion, including weddings, baptisms, anniversaries, corporate events, or any special event, California Bakery and Cafe in Santa Clarita is open 24 hours to satisfy any craving, anytime. Call us, 255-1254. That's 255-1254. Save water and save money. SCV Water wants to help you find your fit and take advantage of conservation rebate programs that will help you save. Water your landscape more efficiently. Replace your lawn with water-wise plants. Conduct free in-home water surveys. Cover your swimming pool and more. Find the programs that fit your needs and start saving today. Visit conserve.yourscvwater.com to learn more. That's conserve.yourscvwater.com. The Oasis treatment at the Ivy Day Spa begins with a gentle exfoliation, then rinsed away in warm showers. You're painted with a soothing aloe vera, shea butter, and coconut oil body mask. Then travel through the warm hydro cape chambers. The relaxation chamber completes your Oasis body moisturizing treatment with a pH balancing mist and a warm cup of tea. Feel refreshed, hydrated, and relaxed. Pamper yourself. The Ivy Day Spa, Town Center Drive. Your building sign is essential to getting customers to your location. Feathers can help you get your business noticed. Feathers, now in a new larger space with plenty of parking. They walk you through each phase of your project with special attention to detail and quality. Feathers will provide you with a sign that you can be proud of. Your sign will draw customers in instead of having them drive by. Visit Feathers online at feathersigns.com or go to Feathers' brand new bigger location at 26017 Huntington Drive off Rye Canyon or call 298-9442. The coronavirus has put us in a position of creating a new normal. Family Law at Home understands their goal is to meet you in the safest place possible and these days that might be in your own home in a virtual meeting. Family Law at Home will provide you with immediate advice on your family law matters, such as divorce cases, child custody disputes, and domestic violence. It's as easy as going to FamilyLawAtHome.com. You'll choose your own consultation date and be in immediate contact with one of their esteemed attorneys. Family Law at Home handles the legal aspect while you and your family navigate the new chapter in your lives. Go to FamilyLawAtHome.com. KHTS, AM 1220, and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 10 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. Millions of Americans are still losing jobs. Anissa Brady, Fox News. Over 2 million new claims for unemployment benefits last week, down slightly from the week before. The number of people applying for unemployment benefits has been gradually declining since the record of 6.8 million in the week ending March 28th. Economists say claims numbers are staying high, though, as states are processing applications for gig workers, and many others are finally able to register for benefits. Fox News' Vinny Costola, the nine-week total is nearly 39 million people. After spending trillions to help the economy, there's no consensus yet in Congress on another coronavirus relief bill. The American people have already been heroes. It's our honor as senators to stand with them. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell remains critical to House Democrats for not returning that chamber to regular business. Democrats criticized the Senate for focusing on anything other than coronavirus. Just a short time ago, the confirmation vote to make Texas Congressman John Ratcliffe the new Director of National Intelligence. The top two Democrats in Congress want a special tribute to the lives lost in the pandemic. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi sent a letter to President Trump asking that flags be lowered to half staff on all public buildings once the death toll reaches 100,000. Schumer spoke about the request on the Senate floor. One unfortunate side effect of the COVID-19 pandemic is that we've become accustomed to the replication of grim statistics. Calling the milestone a sad day of reckoning, the leaders wrote the move would serve as a national expression of grief so needed by everyone in our country. Rachel Feverly, Fox News. President Trump is heading to Michigan to visit a Ford plant that's been making ventilators, telling reporters on his way out he'll have an announcement soon on holding a G7 meeting hostages to Camp David. America is listening to Fox News. At Fisher Investments, we do things differently, and other money managers don't understand why. Because our way works great for us. But it may not work for your clients. That's why Fisher Investments is a fiduciary obligated to put clients first. 
It's the highest standard for a financial advisor. So what do you provide? Cookie-cutter portfolios like the rest of us? No cookie-cutter portfolios here. Fisher Investments tailors portfolios to meet each client's goals and needs. But you do sell investments that earn you high commissions, right? And make commissions when you make trades for your clients? No, Fisher Investments doesn't sell any commission investment products, and we never earn commissions on trades. So what's in it for you? Fisher Investments fees are structured so we do better when our clients do better. When it comes to helping clients achieve a comfortable retirement, we're clearly different. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments, clearly different money management. Investments and securities involve the risk of loss. There's still affecting widespread damage from record flooding in central Michigan, leaving many questions in its wake for state and federal agencies. There's little left of Whitson Lake in portions of Midland County, Michigan, where following the failure of a weak and aging dam, 3.4 billion cubic feet of water after days of rain emptied in the Kittabawassee River, flooding communities and rupturing the Sanford Dam 10 miles downstream. I was terrified. This is nothing like I've ever seen in my life. Sanford resident Erica Storms witnessing homes, campers, and cars that have become river debris. Tens of thousands of people evacuated under a state of emergency in Midland County. The federal government also sending a team of engineers to investigate the failed dams, which were under state oversight. Jeff Manasso, Fox News. Federal regulators have revoked the license of the privately operated Edenville Dam in 2018. The Greyhound Bus Company agrees to pay an air pollution penalty of $125,000 to settle a lawsuit in Washington, D.C., but the Attorney General also says the company agrees to a new policy of not idling buses while they're parked. This is welcome news for Elvis fans and Tennessee tourism. The gates open again at the former home of Elvis Presley, 100-plus acres dedicated to the king of rock and roll. The signature tourist attraction in Memphis shut down on March 20th due to the coronavirus. Several days after, movie theaters and the zoo closed to the public. Some of the changes, temperature checks for everyone. Staff will wear masks. Guests are encouraged as well. Mansion tours cut to 25% capacity, giving you more space to walk through the home. And there's six-foot social distancing markers throughout the property. And restaurants limited to 50% capacity and no outdoor seating on the patio. T.J. Popper, Fox News. And Lisa Brady, Fox News. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220, Canyon Country, California. K260CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California. Choosing the right copy service was a top priority for John Hayes, owner of Hayes Plumbing in Santa Clarita. John's glad he called Sean Milligan at Professional Copy Service. Uh, well, once we found Sean at Professional Copy Service, um, we've been very, very happy. We started using him right after our factory warranty had expired on the current copier that we had purchased. And uh, Sean and his guys have been uh, far and above uh, better than the factory warranty service. Professional Copy Service, 299-5756. 299-5756. The only authorized Canon dealer for sales and service in Santa Clarita for Santa Clarita Professional Copy Service. We try to keep everything we can in this valley. Uh, we shop local ourselves and we try to use any uh, local merchant that possibly can. Call Sean Milligan at Professional Copy Service. 299-5756. Call Professional Copy Service immediately. They'll save you a lot of time and get your office staff back up to full production. Professional Copy Service. Santa Clarita's only authorized Canon office equipment dealership. Ask about our free on-site demos. At iLead Agua Dulce, we believe the most important thing a child can learn in school is who they are. Life's real tests are never standardized, which is why we've developed an individual-based curriculum that values exploration, cooperation, and creativity. As our learners grow, so do we. Our tuition-free charter school is currently enrolling grades TK through 7th and adding 8th grade in 2020. Your young learner will be immersed in a unique environment where possibility and self-discovery are at the core of every experience. The Agua Dulce campus features beautiful indoor and outdoor spaces for hands-on inspiration, including a robotics lab, a garden bed, a greenhouse, and a technology-based exploratorium. Eilid Agua Dulce is conveniently located on the east side of the Santa Clarita Valley, just off the 14 freeway. Check out our homeschool options too. To schedule a campus tour or learn more about our programs, visit iLeadAguadulce.org. We're enrolling now. iLead Schools. Free to think, inspired to lead.
Mission Valley Bank is a commercial bank in the Santa Clarita Valley that really puts the community into community banking. At Mission Valley Bank, we strive to be a trusted advisor to our clients, and that means being an integral part of the communities we serve. We started the Give Where You Live program to help bring awareness to our nonprofit partners. We're more than just a local business bank. In fact, we're a full-service, independent commercial bank that is locally owned, community-minded, and relationship-driven. I'm Tamara Gurney, President and CEO of Mission Valley Bank, and I invite you to experience the Mission Valley Bank difference, where your success is our mission. We want to be your most valued bank. Mission Valley Bank has been named Most Trusted Advisor Business Banker by the San Fernando Valley Business Journal five years in a row and received the Business Leadership Award by the Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce, Valley Industry Association, and SCV Economic Development Corporation. Visit them at their Center Point branch location or at missionvalleybank.com. Member FDIC. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, The Way Out Recovery SCV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call The Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited, affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. Hey there, it's Tori with your hometown station weather. Sunny today with highs in the mid-80s, overnight lows in the mid-50s. For anything and everything Santa Clarita Valley related, including the latest on COVID-19 here in the Santa Clarita area, go to hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. We are also on Facebook Live. If you want to head on over to the KHTS radio Facebook page, you can see us there. This is Matt Watson, your host. I am here in studio with engineer Shane, which is why I'm wearing the mask. You know, it's funny, Shane, I didn't I didn't shave this morning and, and, and the stubble is like every time I talk, it's, it's grabbing the mask. And it's pulling it down, getting it in my nose. I decided I'm going to shave once I can get a haircut. I'm going to do them both at the same time. So okay. hopefully soon. Okay. Shaving a haircut. Two bits. Alrighty. This is Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. Again, I'm your host, Matt Watson. Our next guest is Shannon Vonnegut. Shannon has over 20 years of experience in public libraries. She's a graduate of Little Rock High School, just a couple of minutes up north from us. She received her associate's degree from Antelope Valley College and her BA in history, woohoo, from Cal State San Bernardino. Later, she moved on to get her master's of library and information science from San Jose State University. Shannon began her career with the County of Los Angeles Public Library in 1996, joining the library in 2011 uh, as uh, a teen digital services librarian and was later promoted to Digital Services Manager in 2015. As our city librarian, that's right, she's the boss, she is responsible for overseeing staff, programming, operations, and services for the Santa Clarita Public Library. This role also involves being a visionary and inspirational leader and establishing and instilling a positive organizational culture at the libraries to provide the best public library services for the Santa Clarita community. And we were talking off the air Boy, the feel at the local libraries today is a lot more positive than they've been lately. Good morning, Shannon. Welcome in. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Some exciting news last weekend, but before we get to that, I want to ask first and foremost, how are you and your family? Everybody safe and well? Yeah, we're all doing really good. That's good. That is the most important thing, but great, great news the city made the announcement late last week, and then we talked with the mayor about it just a couple of days ago. The Santa Clarita Public Library is open again, isn't it? Um, limited, but yes, we are <laughs> we are open and providing services. It is limited, yeah. It's not a, a bum rush on the library that it normally is. But uh, so, what does it look like? What does that limited opening look like? 
So for right now, as of Monday, we started a curbside service. So what it does is it allows people to place an order either on our website or um, they can call us, place an, a request for an item, um, movies, music, books, whatever items you can find in the catalog that you're interested in. Once those items become available, we'll send an email out to that person letting them know that they can come and pick it up. They come to the library where we have a curbside pickup set up. So we have numbered parking spots. You park or walk up to a spot, give us a call, let us know you're there. We grab your items, we bag them up, we set them on the table, we get at least six feet away, and then you can come and pick up your items and you have your normal checkout circulation that you normally would the three weeks or one week. Um, that's the standard normal, back to normal policy. Right, exactly. And you know, it's funny as you're talking, it reminds me a little bit about the uh, car hop service that they've got going on now at, <laughs> at Route 66. Um, so, so yeah, you order your stuff ahead of time, you pull up and, and your staff will gather it and, and bring it out to you. You mentioned movies, music, books, which I know are, are some of the most popular uh, things that folks are looking for out of the library. Uh, but you guys provide so many different services and and uh, different things for, for all different types of families uh, when you guys are open normally. So mm -hmm. what services are available now? I know you talked about some of them. A and then what are some of the services that you normally provide that, that aren't back online yet? So right now we do have a lot of online programming. We have story time Monday through Thursday at 9.30, and that's virtual, so it's on Facebook. Bilingual story times, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11. We have recently added a baby bounce and sing program, which um, goes up Mondays and Wednesdays at 11. And for families and adults, we have a virtual game night, which is um, on Zoom at 7.30 every Thursday. So that's filling the whole of a lot of our programming. It's a lot less programming than we normally do. But given that we aren't having people in the building, it's something that people can come and participate and see their favorite librarians and really get involved with. Um, the curbside pickup is filling the need for materials that the public has. We also have a ton of materials online, online resources. Um, now that we have our phones back up, uh, people can call us and ask us questions. We are still doing library cards. So if anyone needs a library card, they can either email or call us and we will mail a library card out to them so they can access our resources. So really the only thing people can't get right now is um, to come into the building and probably using our computers or printing. Um, there is still Wi-Fi, so if people do come and park in the parking lot, they have access to our free Wi-Fi. So we have had a lot of people who rely on that and they come and sit in the parking lot with their phone or their laptop and can still access that. So really the only thing you can't do right now is walk in our doors. Oh, that's fantastic. So you guys are able to provide pretty much a, a comprehensive level of services. I was going to ask about the, the social media content. You guys are doing quite a bit of uh, things there. You mentioned we can still get a library card. That is great. So is there, is there a transition time? Like if I were to order something, ca could I even order something today if I didn't have a library card? Um, you would need a library card to do it, but when we set up your library card, we would give you that number so that you would have it. So when you pulled up at the library, you, we ask you for your library card number or driver's license number just to make sure you're the right person. Um, if you had that number from when we pulled it to you when you got the card, theoretically you could, yes, use it today and get your item. Okay. Okay. And, and so you're going to get a glimpse into the type of person that I am versus the type of person that producer Sarah is. I, I have no idea what <laughs> my library card number is, and I wouldn't even know where to begin to look for it. <laughs> Um, what about my, like I do at the grocery store, can I give you my phone number, does my driver's license work, or, or, or am I going to have to get reinitiated and, and, and jumped back into the public library system? Well, if you don't have your card, we would probably want to issue you a new one just to make sure it wasn't lost somewhere, or somebody else isn't using it, anything like that. But if you call us or email us and provide us something like your um, driver's license number, we prefer that over a phone number just because it's more individualized, but there are several ways we can verify who you are and make sure that you're the person that matches the records that we have, and then we would get you a new card. Okay, very cool, because it it, it's 
you guys are definitely an, an essential service with folks uh, at home and, and a lot more time on their hands. People are looking for new things to read, new movies to watch, and, and, and you know, we need access to that. So, yeah, I can imagine a lot of folks are going to start heading out to you real soon. I mentioned producer Sarah. She's actually asking right now on the Facebook feed. <laughs> she wants to know, she says, in the past, the Santa Clarita Library catalog allowed for borrowing from a network of several dozen other library systems, uh, which means uh, nearly anything I'm seeking is available. Is that still possible? Can I request things from you that, uh, that other libraries currently hold? So for now, no. Um, most libraries, just because of the quarantine issues and keeping things compliant with the CDC and the IMLS, um, Institute of Museum and Library Services, um, we are not sharing items between library systems. So all interlibrary loan for now is not available. Um, once those conditions ease, then that service of getting the materials from other library systems will be back in place. But for now, that is not available. Bummer. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> so, but now, your digital library, it, that never went offline, right? People can still download magazines, movies, things like that? Yes. And we are. that is the one place that we can still buy new titles. Uh, most of our book vendors are still shut down. So all the new books that are coming out, we can place orders for, but we will not get them until everybody's back up and running. So it still could be a while before we have the new physical books. The digital books we can order today, and they'll be available this afternoon. Oh wow! Wow, that is a quick turnaround. And, you know, I'm on the uh, I'm on the website right now, and I actually just checked it out. You guys have quite a few movies. You know, some of us have already binged our way um, from <laughs> A to Z on Netflix, and are, are looking for something new. You guys have got some great titles on here. I'm looking at. Uh, in my opinion, one of the most amazing movies of all time, The Ultimate Gift, you guys have available to stream. Shannon, have you ever seen The Ultimate Gift? I don't think so. Okay, you've got some homework. This is the most amazing <laughs> movie ever. It, it, uh, it'll, you're going to get sore from laughing, but you're also going to tear up. Uh, you've got to watch The Ultimate Gift, and, and it's, it's right here on the library to stream. So you mentioned social media content. You're still doing um, uh, story time in two different languages, which is, is beautiful. You're accessing uh, uh, just about everybody in our community here. Um, you've got the sing-alongs and, and different things. What about the worms? Are we still feeding the worms online? I don't think we've been feeding the worms. I think we are in the process of trying to move them back to the library. Oh, wow. So that will probably come back in a few weeks once we get them set up. Very cool. You know, last time you were on our show, you inspired producer Sarah, and she and her kids <laughs> now have a, a bed of worms that are ready to go in the garden. Worms are awesome and low maintenance. So <laughs> they're a good pet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, um, you know, I've, I've actually seen some friends on my social media feed that, that are really struggling with distance learning, and, and mm -hmm. we talked last time. Um, are you guys still providing online tutoring? Because I know so many parents need that now more than ever. Yes, that's something we have we always offer. So that is available year round. So anybody that needs it can sign in and use that. Uh, very cool, uh, Mike. I'm going to make sure that you get the link to the the online tutoring from the public library because I know my buddy is is struggling. Speaking of struggling, like I said, I'm, I'm clicking around here on, on your website, and Shannon, you guys have a tab that says mental health resources. Did you know that May is actually Mental Health Awareness Month? We did know that. <laughs> All right. So what kind of resources do you guys have here on your on your page? So on that page, we've linked to just a couple of verified resources, um, some of the L.A. County resources, the mentalhealth.gov, um, the American Psychological Association, STD Youth Project, a lot of resources either regionally or on a larger level that are verified and legitimate. So it's very important to us as librarians. Um, it's just a place to go where if you're looking for some legitimate resources that aren't random Facebook posts that your friends set up, this is where we would direct you. And we've also put together um, a few book lists that will direct you to some book resources if that's what you're looking for as well. Talking to Shannon Vonnegut, the uh, librarian at the Santa Clarita Public Libraries, it is so great to have the public libraries back online. I'm sure you and your staff are are really pleased. Is there anything else that you, you wanted to share? Are there any events coming up? Any future plans that we can look forward to as we head into out of now phase two and into that much, much anticipated phase three? Anything else that you want to share with us before you go? 
Um, our other big thing coming up is summer reading. We do summer reading program every year, and we are doing it again this year. It starts June 8th and runs through July 25th. Um, in conjunction with that, we will be doing a lunch at the library program at the Canyon Country Library and the Newhall Library. So Monday through Friday, you can bring kids by to get the free lunch. Um, the summer reading program will be online until we get to the point of when we can open the buildings, but we will still have crafts and we will have incentives for reading and providing prizes and all of the normal fun summer reading activities. That is fantastic. You guys are doing so much, and your, your website is so well organized here, so I want to encourage our listeners to head over to the Santa Clarita Public Library uh, website. Shannon, thank you so much. You, you've brightened our day. Now, remember, you do have homework. Did you write it down? I did, The Ultimate Gift. Uh, it's an amazing movie. you got to check it out and then get back to me, okay? <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us, Shannon. We appreciate it. Thank we're, you. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but please stick around. We will be right back. I will continue that follow-up question on project-based learning and how you can get your kids tapped into their passions and really diving deeper than they've ever dived, dove. We'll try to resolve that one over the commercial break as well. You're listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. The stress was unbelievable. Debbie Morris is a changed woman. A giant boulder's been lifted. Debbie called Made for You. I'd finished a day of work. Professional, residential, and commercial cleaning. Walk into my house. Made for You. It was an absolute pigsty. Weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, or even one-time seasonal cleaning. Our mess kept growing. 255-2922. Even when we weren't home. 255-2922. Made for you rescued me. Dutton Plumbing, this is Eric. Son, it's Mother. I was calling to let you know I just bought 10 cases of water for me and Eunice. We tried shoving it into the pantry, but it won't fit. Can you tell me where to shove it? Uh, never mind the water bottles, Mom. I just installed that new Dutton Plumbing water filtration system for you, remember? Our water filtration systems actually produce bottled quality water out of every faucet in the house, even your shower. So you'll never run out of pure, clean water again. That's great, son. When are you installing it? Mom, it's already installed. I better call Eunice. She could really use a water filtration system. She drinks a lot of water, and she also pees a lot. Mom! DuttonPlumbing.com Dutton Plumbing's water filtration systems remove all harmful chemicals in your water and protects your health. Never run out of pure, clean water again. Right now, save on Dutton's water filtration system. Learn more at DuttonPlumbing.com Greetings, Santa Clarita. Hey, this is Bill Reynolds, president of our Veterans Memorial Committee here in SCV. This is a public service announcement to let you all know that, unfortunately, we have to cancel our standard Memorial Day ceremony, which was held every year at Eternal Valley. Crowd gatherings are not allowed per the COVID-19 virus. Therefore, we will conduct an abbreviated ceremony that will be aired on KHTS Hometown Station at 10 a.m. Thank you. Power Automotive is open for you during these challenging times. They've taken extra precautions to keep their employees and customers safe. What makes Power Automotive different? They offer a two-year, 24,000-mile warranty on all their repair services. All makes and models, autos, trucks, diesels, and even RVs. Mention KHTS and get 20% off parts. Power Automotive, on Solidad between White's Canyon and Sierra Highway, behind Denny's. Power Automotive will show you why they've been voted Santa Clarita's number one repair shop for the last 18 years. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. You are listening to Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers with Matt Watson. So I was talking a little bit earlier uh, last hour uh, about uh, the, the listener's question from yesterday. We had Dustin Langning in. He was talking about project-based learning, talked about the incredible stuff that his kids were doing uh, on passion-based projects. And one of our listeners asked us, said, how can we as parents 
uh, home now schooling our kids incorporate some of the same level of excitement and latitude necessary for project-based learning without getting frustrated because of our kids' lack of passion from, from the child's end. So what I started to talk about is, y you know, you've got to start with that question. Ask your kid. Ask your kid what they're interested in. And, and you know, you're going to find that when you put it in their hands and, and they realize that they get to learn about anything that they're passionate about. You know, we talked about the kid that, that wrote the, the, the Death Row uh, Last Meal cookbook. Um, wow, dark, but that was something that, w that she was passionate about and, and, and she went really, really, really deep. Um, and your kids will do that too it, once they discover that they get to study or work on whatever they want. I, I talked about how you know, that word might be a little intimidating coming from mom or dad. You know, what do you want to study? You're going to, with some of our kids, you might get, all right, yeah, I get to study whatever I want. With some of our kids, you might get what I would get from my kids. Study? What do you mean? Nope, I'm out. Okay, so maybe reframe the question a little bit and start with, what are you passionate about? What are some of your passions? What have you always been curious about? What are some things that you wonder about? And start to brainstorm with them. Okay, and, and depending on your kid, you know your kid better than I do, um, you may have to throw the question out one night and then don't let them answer. Say, no, 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 we're going to talk tomorrow night, right? And, and you make this the, you know, the conversation of, at the dinner table for, you know, a good couple, three days, maybe the entire week. Just brainstorming different topics that your child is, is, is passionate about or, or wonders about. Or, or you just say, you know, what have you always been curious about? What have you always wondered or, uh, you know, what have you always wanted to know a little bit more about? Whatever question you think is going to hook with your kid. And you know what? Maybe you throw a hook out there and, and you don't get a nibble. Um, and so, you know, throw another hook out there. And if you don't get a nibble, then, you know, tell them pass the peas and, and try again tomorrow. Again, don't get frustrated. Don't get angry because then, you know, you're going to push them in the other direction. Uh, this is going to require your patience. So make sure that... Uh, uh, you, you know, you might want to do it when you've had a few bites in your stomach so that you're not uh, uh, a little bit less impatient, right? So you're going to have to be, like I said, that steady drip, not the, 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 the jackhammer, okay? So you introduce the idea, and, and again, don't accept an answer right away. Let them really think about it over a couple of days, okay? Be patient with them. A and, you know, if the kids do continually persist in being unresponsive and, and, and asking, why do we have to do this? See, you, you can love and logic them. You, you just flip the answer and say, well, I, I, I figured it would be more fun, more interesting for you to learn about something that interests you. Or again, I, I, if you think the word learn is going to turn them off, well, I figured it'd be a lot more fun for you uh, to, to take a look at something that interests you. But if you want, we can take a look at things that interest me. It's your choice. Right, and you kind of give them that choice. Do you wanna, do you wanna research something that you like or something that I like? Right, you know which one they're gonna choose. Now, once they do start answering, and again, I I as long as they see that you're gonna be patient, you're not gonna get angry, but you're gonna persist. You're not giving up on this. Uh, they will start to answer. Their answers still might be a little silly or sarcastic or evasive. That's okay. Take those answers anyways, and then continue to follow through with what else. Okay, and eventually they will get serious with you. And, and, you know, sometimes their sarcastic answers actually turn into some really good topics for, for, for study. But eventually you're going to hit on a few uh, pretty good ideas. And then you start process of eliminating, you know, is this something that you want to take a deep dive on? Is this something that you want to go into? Is this something that you, you'd like to learn about? And, and, you know, they might roll their eyes and say, no, I was just being silly. Okay, you cross that one off the list. Go back over all those ideas. Start to talk about what a product or a deliverable by, might be. We'll talk about deliverables in just a second. That'll help them decide, you know. Yes, I've always been curious about that, but that's something that's going to take me 30 seconds to Google. Okay, might not be a great idea for a project. I always use the word, you know, we, we use the word Google as a noun and a verb. I, I use it as an, as an adjective as well. Is, is that something that's Googleable? A and if the answer is yes, then it's not a project, Okay. If the kid says, I've always wondered what the capital of Nebraska is, that's not a project. That's something that you ask Alexa and then you continue to eat dinner. Um, but yeah, once they start talking about a product or a deliverable from their project, that's going to help them decide, is this something that I can really develop something around? Okay. Uh, some ideas are interesting, but like I said, not necessarily feasible. So once you settle on a topic, okay, and it may take you a week to settle on a topic, that's okay. It's going to be worth it. Trust me. Just stick to it. It's going to be worth it. Um, 
you have to determine a couple of things. The first thing you need to determine is what's the deliverable going to be? What are they going to be working toward? And who are they going to present to? Those two things are very, very important. So let's talk about those. That first concept, what will the deliverable be? You need to have that deliverable so that they have something tactile, something that they're working on. If it's something that's nebulous, I want to, you know, and, and it's very valuable, but I want to learn to speak French. There's no end line there, right? Um, but if it's, I want to write a cookbook in French, or I want to be able to call my cousin in Toronto and, and have a five-minute conversation with them in French, there's something uh, that's deliverable there. There's, there's that end point, right? Um, it, it gives us the idea that uh, uh, when we're finished with the project, it's obvious, okay? And it makes the idea come to life. Right? It doesn't necessarily have to be something they build. You know, uh, uh, Not all projects include cardboard and glitter, although that's always fun, especially for the younger ones. It could be a, a, a research paper. Right? It could be something that, uh, that they write and, and publish on a, on a website, you know, on a Wix website or a blog or something like that. Their project, their product, might be an email to the mayor or the county supervisor or, or the governor. You know, if, if they want to learn you know, how can we in the age of corona do this more effectively and, and they want to get involved in advocacy, maybe that's their product, right? Maybe their product is an email or, or a letter that they've written to someone. It could be a Zoom lesson. Maybe they, they want to teach somebody younger than them about something. Maybe they want to write a song. Maybe it's an event. You know, maybe they, they want to learn a little bit about event planning, and, and so they uh, put on an event uh, for, for somebody in their life. Um, so, yeah, they need to figure out what their, their final product is going to be, what the project's going to look like when they're done. And then the second thing is who they're going to present to. It needs to be an authentic audience. Think about your school experience. What are some of the most memorable learning experiences that you, you had in school? Think about that for a sec. Chances are uh, you're thinking about something right now that had either an authentic deliverable, an authentic project, or an authentic audience, or if you're lucky, both, okay, where you were presenting a real thing to somebody besides your teacher and your classmates, okay? Without an audience, the product is fake, okay? Think of it this way. If I were to ask you to write a song that you're never going to perform, how much effort are you going to put into that song? Now, if I ask you to write a song that you're going to sing for your grandparents for their 50th wedding anniversary, or the neighbor kids, or her, like I might have done a few weeks ago, uh, post that song on social media. That's right. Go look for it. Find it if you can. How much effort would you put into it now, right? You've got an authentic audience. There's going to be actual real people that are going to be listening to my song. You're going to put a lot more into it, okay? Same for any other product. And then from there, there are just three more things that you need to do, okay? One, you help them set up a benchmark calendar, okay? Come up with a due date. Remember, if there's no due date, then it's never going to get done, right? Because they're humans just like us. Once you have that due date, you're going to need to set incremental due dates. Don't just set that end due date and nothing in between, okay? So if you're going to be done with your song, your paper, your project, your thing on June 15th, then when are you going to get your first draft done? When are you going to have your, your, your list of brainstorming to done? When are you going to have your research done? Those kind of things, okay? So help them set, set benchmark dates, okay? Those incremental pieces of their project. Okay. Second thing you need to do is check in with them every day. Now, this is going to depend a lot on the age of, of, of your learner, right? But you need to make sure that they're making continual progress or they're going to procrastinate just like you would. Okay? You may need to, as you check in with them, you may need to continue to provide more motivation, remind them why they chose to do this project. You may need to help them shift. You know, Maybe they aren't as excited about this project as they thought they were and, and you choose a different topic. That's okay. You may need to get them unstuck. They may find that, you know, well, I had, to, uh, I had to reach out to this person and ask their opinion, or I needed to get information from, oh, I don't know, Shannon Vonnegut, the city public librarian, and, and she hasn't gotten back to me yet. Well, where did you email it to? Well, I emailed it to info at. Okay, well, let's, let's try this. Let's try that. You, ha you might have to get them unstuck, okay? And you may need to consult with them. Now, remember, if you've got younger ones, you know that that, that type of process isn't going to work. You're going to need to be a lot more hands-on, right? Helping them every day, step-by-step, step, spending 45 minutes on it each day or, or something like that, right? 
A and how great would that be to, to spend that kind of quality time with your kid? With the older ones, maybe you're just checking in with them at dinner every night or checking in with them at the mo in the morning. What are you going to do, do today? And then check in with them at night. How's it, how's it going? Now, back off or lean in as needed. Remember, yes, you are their consultant, right? You, you're there to bounce ideas off of, but you don't have to be the expert, okay? If they want to learn how to rebuild the engine in the car, you don't have to be a master mechanic, just a thought partner. Hmm, I have no idea even how to spell carburetor. Who can we go to? You know, you can be a resource for them without being that expert in their project. Remember, the idea behind project-based learning is making them the expert, not you, Okay, Dustin talked about teaching his kids to fly. Yes, Dustin is working on, uh, on his pilot's license, but he had n n no idea how to fly, didn't know anything about it when he first started the project. Okay, so his kids became experts before he ever did. And then last, you're there to push them to get their best work. Okay, again, that steady drip, patience, not the jackhammer, but continue to ask them patiently, calmly, is this the best work you can do? Give constructive feedback. Make sure that they know that they can go through multiple drafts, okay? Once you write a paper, that doesn't have to be the end of it. You can rewrite it and rewrite it. Let them know, hey, this looks great. I like how you did this and this and this, but, but do you see over here? I, I think you can, you can develop this a little bit more, or do you think that this, or, or how do you feel about that? Do you think you can give a little bit more? You can go a little bit deeper, go a little bit further. Where can we learn more about this? Continue to just gradually push them. A and even after they present their project, you don't have to stop there. Once they're done, they present, they share, they're going to have this huge feeling of satisfaction, but have them reflect. Think about Sam that we talked with that first hour. That reflection piece is so important. Ask them, now that you're done, what would you have done differently? If you had to do it again, how might you develop this differently? A and, you know, if you need help with this, y something that you should really do is Google Austin's butterfly, just, just those two words, Austin's butterfly. It will blow your mind what this little guy, I think a six-year-old, is, is able to develop on his own by just that steady drip of, hey, Austin, what about this? Hey, Austin, what about that? And, and I think that will really help you get the most out of your kid in this, this deeper learning experience, okay? It, it'll blow your mind what we can get out of our kids when we're positive and patient. And don't forget to have them present, right? That authentic audience. If it's truly interesting and important to them, this is going to be an exciting s experience. Yes, uh, it may make them nervous. It might be the first time they ever present to a public audience, but it's going to be an experience that they never forget. You know, this is something that they can, they can take deep. You can do this, okay? Your children can do this. You will not regret it, trust me. I and remember, if you do go for it and, and you and your kids don't mind, would you send it to me? Uh, you can email me at homeschoolinganswers at iLeadSchools.org. I'd love to hear about the stuff that you develop. Or, you know, each day we're here at 9 o'clock. You can post on the Facebook Live feed. Um, but ask for help. Ask for guidance. Ask for mentors as needed. Like I said, if, if your child wants to learn how to rebuild the engine in that Volkswagen and you have no idea about auto mechanics, bring in a mentor. There's, there's hundreds of people. Think about the kind of community we live in. Come on. There are plenty of people out there that would love to help your kid grow in an area that they know, understand, have dedicated their life to. Okay? And remember the old adage, if at first you don't succeed, you're about average. Right? So if, if it bombs at first, it's okay to sweep up the dust and, and try it again. Okay? So, so give it a shot. Remember, Brainstorm ideas, settle on one that you think your child, th that your child thinks will work best for them, and then get started on it. Decide what the deliverable is and who they're going to present it to, and then start working. Develop that calendar, develop that, uh, that product each day, check in with them, keep moving, push them to get their best work, okay? You can do this. It, this can be not the least educational time in your child's life. This can be the most educational time in your child's life. You've got to be willing to, to be patient, but be consistent with your kids, though.
Okay? So give it a shot and send it to me at homeschoolinganswers at iLeadSchools.org. I would love to see some of the things that, that your kids develop out of their passions. You know, when we pour something into our passion, uh, when we pour our passion into something, the product is always, always beautiful. So give it a shot. Let me know what you've come up with. Okay? We are going to head to another commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be talking with our good friend, Christina Debray. She's going to be helping us deal with the trauma in our lives coming up. And for more information on how this thing called COVID-19 is affecting our valley, I want you to go to hometownstation.com, hometownstation.com, and click on the red banner. There you're going to find tips on the economy, health updates, special business hours, and much, much more. You are listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. Lots of people can build websites, but there's one Santa Clarita company that specializes in designing websites for your business, Small Dog Creative. The Small Dog Creative team is made up of local designers who are hands-on. Their talented team of experts build premium websites and redefine branding. Small Dog Creative doesn't just build websites. They'll upgrade your business's online presence and turn your business into a powerful online brand. Small Dog Creative, Santa Clarita's most innovative web and design company. SmallDogCreative.com It's never been so easy to have a great night out. Whether it's a date night or girls' night out, experience Pinot's palette in Valencia or Encino. Order your favorite drink from the bar and paint your very own masterpiece. No art experience needed. Local artists make it easy for you. So you can paint, sip, and listen to great music while creating a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. Fun, relaxing, and memorable. Pinot's Palette. To book your party, go to pinotspalette.com. That's pinotspalette.com. Your hometown station. It's no secret that KHTS has the best midday talk show lineup around. If you've missed any of your favorites, no problem. KHTS has you covered. Podcasts for all the midday shows can be found right on our website, hometownstation.com. Whether you missed a show from two days, two weeks, two months, or two years ago, and you want to catch up, we got you covered. They're all right there. Plus extra podcasts, too. That's hometownstation.com. Hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. America, your children have an amazing superpower. That's right. They can help save lives by simply washing their hands. Just 20 seconds of thorough hand washing after they've coughed or sneezed or been outside can help fight against the dastardly spread of germs. Armed with only soap and water and hands, your superhero can protect you, your family, and everyone out there in America land. Amazing. Find out more at coronavirus.gov. A message from the CDC and the Ad Council. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town New Hall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.com. Org. I'm Matt Denny, CPA, with Denny & Company, LLP, your hometown CPAs. Here are some tips to help you with anxiety you may have about your income tax returns for 2019. The deadlines for filing both state and federal returns have been extended to July 15. Both the state and the feds are also extending the time for making 2019 tax payments otherwise due, without interest or penalty, to July 15. These details keep changing, so contact us at 661-286-8860 or see our website at dennyllp.com. Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, real estate developers, realtors, contractors, businesses, nonprofit organizations, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker is one of Santa Clarita's leaders, consistently listed as one of our most influential. When everything is on the line and you need legal counseling, Visit HackerLawGroup.com. Comfort Keepers provides your loved one with loving in-home care. Miles McNamara, certified senior advisor and owner of Comfort Keepers in-home care. Our caregivers can help you in your own home, enhancing independence, creating safety and comfort. Our Comfort Keepers provide companionship, meal preparation, medication reminders, assistance with personal care, and even transportation to doctor's appointments. If someone you love can use a helping hand at home, visit ComfortKeepers.com. Or call 287-4200. Consumers Furniture is back open for your business. 
The safety of our community and our staff, above all, is most important to us. We will provide a safe and clean environment for you to find the perfect piece of furniture for your home. To help you with your purchase, we are offering 25% off your entire order or 24 months same as cash financing. And for our awesome essential workers, we will deliver locally your furniture free of charge. Consumers Furniture is located in the Center Point Shopping Center below Sam's Club and Walmart. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. We are now joined by Christina Debray. Christina is local celebrity and our show's official licensed marriage and family therapist. Christina's got an incredible personal story of, of grit and determination, something that we all could use a little bit more of. Christina ha has grown up through uh, a life of social distancing and, and trauma, struggle, and, and she's come out on the other side or, or, or continues to come out, if you will. She's continuing to grow in her own story, but then sharing her experiences and her expertise through her practice. It, it's, it's such an incredible resource during these difficult times. Christina's a graduate at Cal State Northridge and Pepperdine Universities. Uh, she practices here in Valencia. She's studied everything from trauma to phobias, performance enhancement, uh, attachment disorders, suicide prevention and grief. She works with children and adolescents. She works with adults and, and couples. She's got tremendous experience, more than 18 years of public speaking experience, including with medical professionals and, and patients, schools, business professionals. And again, she doesn't just draw on the theory that she learned in her studies, but she draws on that personal experience to minister to the needs of, of those that are really uh, struggling and, and aren't we all during this time. Christina, good morning. It's good to have you back. Good morning. Christina, I don't know if you were listening to my, my previous guest, Shannon Vonnegut, from the public library system. Uh, I was so excited to see all the mental health resources that they have on the, on the public library webpage. And, and she knew and, and recognized that, this, uh, that May, we're in the midst of Mental Health Awareness Month. Christina, this week we've been talking about trauma. We talked before about anxiety, about depression. Uh, trauma is something that's totally treatable, right? But, but it's certainly not instant. I don't uh, get to pick up the phone, call you for 15, 20 mm -hmm. minutes, and my trauma is solved. Um, so while we're dealing with our trauma, while we're walking through things currently, is there, is, are there ways that we can support those around us that are dealing with, with trauma? You know, I, I've talked about it a lot. I've got a son who's a graduating senior this year, and he's dealing with some of those traumas as well as some, some past traumas in, in his life. Um, how can we support those that we live with, those that we are closest to, or if, if we're the ones that are dealing with that trauma, how do we support ourselves? Those are some great questions. Um, you know, what I always tell people living with trauma is that, you know, we, uh, some things we have a choice over and some things we don't have a choice over. Um, so um, there are a lot of things that we have to live with, but uh, trauma is not one of them. And, uh, or I should say, the side effects of trauma is not one of them. So when we experience trauma, you know, we experience a lot of loss. We have a loss of our self-worth, a loss of our uh, perception of ourselves, a loss of connection to ourselves and others. Uh, we have a loss of intimacy and quality in relationships. We have a loss of trust. We have a loss of safety. Um, we have the loss of ability to discern between real and perceived threats. And so, um, yes, there are a lot of um, wonderful options available saying that can completely eradicate the effects of trauma. However, the process um, can be a little bit difficult. So just like if you're going to the gym to lose 20 pounds or 30 pounds or 40 pounds, you want to be around people who are supporting you in that process. You don't want to come home from the gym, you know, to fried chicken and, you know, the family meal from Taco Bell, as delicious as that is, 
you want people who can support you in that journey to facilitate that process instead of interfere with that process. So ways to support yourself or someone with trauma. Understand that when we experience trauma, it creates unbalance and our, our central nervous system is dysregulated. So just like if you were driving a car and the wheel alignment of the car is off, it would be like your central nervous system is veering left or veering right. You wouldn't say, you know, wow, you know, you need to think positively to, you know, get back on track, <laughs> right? You would say, hey, we need to be realigned or recalibrated. So this is how it is when we experience trauma. We're veering left, we're veering right. We have no uh, concept of center because our central, central nervous system has been, um, it has, um, needs to be realigned. So um, don't say things like you're being dramatic, you're overreacting, you're being too sensitive. Just focus more on what the facts are of, you know, so if someone, you know, we talked yesterday about they don't know the difference between a bear and an ant. So if you see someone freaking out about an ant, don't say, what's the matter with you? It's just an ant. Or stop being dramatic. We want to say, okay, you know, I know that that seems scary. It, you know, it's an ant. I'm here for you. I'm here to protect you. Um, let's focus on what we can do to bring you to a place of calm. So once you realize that the perceived threat is not a real threat, um, that's when you can help bring them to a place of calm. You don't want to shame them. You want to help take their perspective um, and help them with regulating emotions, right? So, hey, let's take some slow, deep breaths in and out together. Let's go for a walk. Let's have a drink of water. Uh, let's listen to some some music. So let's change the subject. Um, when you have trauma, uh, predictability is really important. Mm -hmm. So anything that goes outside of the norm is really scary. And that's because your central nervous system is totally off, that it's hard to interpret incoming things. So when things are new or unpredictable, you don't, it's overwhelming to process that. It's like, whoa, whoa, is that a bear or what is that? Mm -hmm. So everything, if you think that bears are chasing you all day long, that's going to be scary. So um, reliability, predictability, routine. Um, and you want to really make sure that you're showing them that you're listening and having empathy. So again, we had mentioned this before, don't say at least and don't say but. So if you are saying those things, two phrases, you are probably not being empathetic. So when someone's saying, I'm feeling sad, you say, yeah, but look at, you know, all the wonderful things in your life, or I'm feeling scared, or, you know, hey, I'm, I'm really, you know, traumatized by everything going on with COVID-19. Yeah, but you still have a job. Or yeah, but you still have a reliable living environment. That's mm -hmm. not empathy. And it's not helpful, you know, that uh, before we started having these regular conversations with you, that was me, you know, I'm Mr. Brightside, and, and some of you are going to be humming that song for the rest of the day. Um, but yeah, you've got to hold space. You've taught us you need to hold space for, for the grief, recognize the, the trauma that folks have been through. Boy, if you've ever uh, grown up with a, a teenager in the house, you know the fuse that it can light when you say, oh, settle down, it's not that bad, you're being overly dramatic. Um, so yeah, recognize the struggle that they're going through. And if you are, or someone that you live with and love uh, are struggling right now, I want you to please reach out to your healthcare provider or Christina's amazing. You know, reach out to her directly. Her phone number is 661-513-4857. Or you can go to her website. We're posting it on the Facebook Live page now. It's already up there, actually. ChristinaDebray.com. Again, her phone number is 661-513-4857. Or go to ChristinaDebray.com. That is all the time that we have for today. And I want to thank you, Christina, for joining us. 
want to thank our other guests as well. Cheryl Senna, Senior Advisor at SCVI, along with Sam Salters, Graduating Senior, and Shannon Vonnegut, the Santa Clarita Public Librarian. And again, thank you, Christina Debray. Join us again tomorrow and every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Tomorrow we've got Dr. Palucky. He's going to come on and help us live our best lives ever. And, and you know what? Are you a migraine sufferer? I'm going to be asking him how he treats migraines as well. We've also got Big T's Five Minutes of Fame for y'all. You're listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I'm your host, Matt Watson, and this is your hometown station, KHTS. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>